Hey, this is Chris from Practical Navigator. In this video, we're going to walk through the U.S. Coast Guard 100 ton near coastal navigation problems test uh, and solve every problem that's on the sample examination. So this sample examination is uh, provided by the National Maritime Center. It's on their website. You can get a sense of what to expect on any kind of exam from the Coast Guard by going to their website and clicking on the sample exams. So this one is uh, 100 tons. Uh, navigation problems chart plotting on chart 13205TR, which is Block Island Sound, and uh, it's the sample examination. So before we get started solving the problems, we'll just kind of take a look at the exam and the tools that we have at our disposal. So the exam itself is, um, it's got some preliminary matters, and it's got 10 questions, and you need to score a minimum of 90% uh, to pass this module of the 100 ton exam. The other thing I wanted to talk about real quick is the tools that we have at our disposal. In the exam room, you've got uh, dividers. Now, I know there's some folks that prefer this style because it doesn't tear up the chart as much. Uh, and some folks prefer this style because it's got the, the needle and the graphite, graphite on it, so it um, is maybe a little bit more accurate. Uh, I'll use both. You've got two types of ways to measure um, distance on the chart. So there's the rolling weems and the triangles. I grew up doing this uh, in the military, so I prefer that, but I've also used these in the merchant fleet, so I'm comfortable with those as well. Um, each has its advantages and disadvantages, so we'll probably use both on this training video so you can see. Uh, other tools that you've got is a calculator, a pencil, an eraser, and, um, and that's really about all you'll need for tools on this exam. Uh, there's a couple references that we need to talk about. These are my printed versions of them, but um, we'll start with this one. This is the chart number one. And this is a book that uh, helps you find out what things on the chart actually mean. So if you see something on the chart that says OZ, that means it's ooze, which is great. Uh, so you don't typically need this reference too much on the exam, but it's available to you in the test room. You've got the uh, tide tables and the tidal current tables, both for 1983. And so occasionally on the exam, you'll have to solve a tide or a tidal current problem. Uh, in this exam, we will have to solve one. So these are available to you. There's other training videos on exactly how to do this in more detail. Uh, we'll move fairly quickly through our problem. Next, you've got the Coast Pilot, uh, two different volumes available to you. So Cape Cod to Sandy Hook, New Jersey and Sandy Hook to Cape Henry. So for this exam, we'll need the version two of the Coast Pilot. This is in the exam room. And inside of it, it just describes uh, the coast along the way. So for instance, there's a question on this exam about Montauk Point. If you're not familiar with the area, the Coast Pilot is useful because you can just go search for uh, Montauk Point. There it is, that's on page 140. Now you go back and you can read that Montauk Point is the eastern extremity of Long Island. Uh, it's a high and sandy bluff on the summit of which is a light. So yeah, there, you know, you can find Montauk Point on the chart based on that. There's also questions on there that describe uh, the coastline and the Coast Pilot is the place to get that. Finally, there is the light list for the Atlantic Coast, volume one and two again. In this example, we're gonna need volume one. And uh, this book, uh, talks about all lighted aids to navigation. So sometimes there will be a question that says, hey, uh, from Barnegat traffic, lighted, whistle, buoy, bravo, alpha, proceed you know, on a course of three, five, zero degrees true. Well, if you can't find it on the chart just by looking around, in here you can find the latitude and longitude, the characteristic of the light, you know, it's a flashing two plus one green at six seconds. It's got a nominal range of four nautical miles and it's painted with green and red bands on it. So this is useful for that, and also there's an index in the back. So if you gotta find the, some random buoy on the exam, then, uh, then that's the way to do it. You can also use this book when you need to solve um, visibility of lights problems. So these ranges of the lights, you know, Ambrose Light has a nominal range of 24 nautical miles. Well, occasionally we're gonna need to calculate when we could see a light, and this light list will be useful for that. On the chart itself, there's a couple of key features. So there's gonna be the title block um, and then some stuff on there that you may need for the exam, you know, notes and precautions and things like that. Um, this video is not designed to be a basic plotting video. So again, latitude on the left, 
uh, in the right, and then longitude along the top there. Uh, this chart, as a training chart, uh, you'll notice has Loran lines printed on it. Uh, so they can tend to get confusing when you're trying to plot something, but that's just part of the challenge. Um, and then it's basically a chart of Block Island Sound, and we're going to be navigating in this vicinity. So as we look through the exam, there's some things we want to read right off the bat. And it says that uh, we want to choose the best answer to the following multiple choice questions. And you can see that there's 10 questions and they're all multiple choice. Uh, so we're going to need to choose the best answer. So if our math, for instance, comes out on a course of one, five, four degrees true, well, it's not there. We need to choose the best one. So that's one strategy. And then it also says the following 10 problems are to be answered by plotting on chart 13205TR, Block Island Sound, which is this chart. Um, and using the supporting publications, which we've talked about. Each of the 10 questions is completely independent of any other question on the exam, so that's good to know. There's also some important information in the beginning. The following information is applicable to all 10 questions. The abbreviation PSC stands for Per Standard Magnetic Compass. So that's going to be important when we do compass correction and uncorrection problems. Again, this is not a video that's going to teach you exactly how to do that. We'll solve the problem, and then if you want some more Detail on that, you can refer to the basic video on solving that. More information that's important is that variation is 15 degrees west on this problem. Now, if you were navigating in real life, you would use the compass rows and you would see that, that variation on this chart is 14 degrees and 45 minutes west in 1989, and that it has an annual increase of three minutes. All right, so um, that's important because uh, if I was actually navigating on this chart, I would need to correct the variation on the chart for the current year. So I would need to go from 1989 to whatever year it is now, 2017, and apply that. Well, we don't need to do that in the exam. It tells us the variation is 15 degrees west, which is convenient. The last thing it's got in the preamble is the deviation table. So our magnetic headings and our deviations. Again, if we're solving compass correction or uncorrection problems, we're going to need to use the deviation table to help us apply deviation to our magnetic or our compass course. And the way that this works is say you're on a course of 0, 3, 0 degrees magnetic, you need to apply a deviation of 3 degrees east. If you're on a course of 0, 6, 0, the deviation is 4 degrees east. What if you're on a course of 0, 4, 5? Well, the deviation is halfway between. What if you're on a course of 0, 3, 3? Well, then you need to interpolate mathematically what the deviation should be. Also important to note is in the Coast Guard exam, all answers are to the nearest half a degree. So you can use that level of accuracy when you're plotting on the exam. The way that I like to do it is to be as accurate as possible all the way through, and then at the end, when my options are um, down to the nearest half a degree, it's easier for me to pick the correct answer rather than applying that half a degree correction all the way through the problems. So anyway, uh, as we take a look at the exams, the problems themselves, we can see that there's a bunch of different types of problems. So we've got one that talks about um, a precautionary area. We've got one that talks about soundings on the chart itself. So we'll be curious about things on the chart. We've got a course to steer with leeway problem and set and drift, okay? We've got another set and drift problem. So there's gonna be some current problems in this. We've got a course to steer magnetic problem. We've got a tidal ebb uh, or a tidal current problem, an ebb problem. Um, we've got a uh, course made good problem. We've got some problem about making a decision on what you need to do. And then we've got a position problem. And finally, an estimated time of arrival problem. So uh, that's the preamble to these. Um, in the next section of the video, we'll get started and we'll start solving these problems.